I've begun to notice rhythms and evolutional stages when I look back on my life thus far. I sometimes wonder if part of the trick to figuring out what life is all about is learning to notice and understand those rhythms, universal rhythms, and our cyclical nature. The cycle of life. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. And there is a time for everything. This is why we're a beach where I spent my summer holidays as a child. I remember when I was little, getting up early with the rising sun and going for a swim with my grandmother. I loved it. It was as if we were the only two people in the world, just me, grandma, and the rising sun on this empty beach. I recall trying to fit my small feet into her grown-up footprints in the sand as I walked behind her. I remember her squishing her curly hair into her tight, brightly coloured swimming cap with plastic flowers on it as we carefully placed our towels on the sand and ran to the water. The memories of moments together are as clear today in my mind as they were in the moment. Strings of memory woven into the fabric of my life somehow still feeling like they are connecting us together through space and time, even though Grandma has long since passed on. This is a string of memory from my morning of life. Here, that story is told in a cloak of light, closest to nature, symbolizing the early years of being born into the stories and experiences of one's family and whakapapa or ancestry. Famed for her pale beauty, this light cloak is named after my ancestor Hinikorako and is the most true to the traditional Māori cloak form out of the four cloaks, the four stages of life. It holds the pure potentiality of all I could be through choices, bloodlines and experience. Traditionally, the kahu or cloak is held in high esteem by Māori. It is an item of adornment and prestige, a taonga or treasure that connects and collapses genealogical space-time through the aho or threads that join the layers of generations. Fenu relates to the word whenua, which is the afterbirth, and also the name for the for the land, often the Afterbirth is put into the land, and that's your standing place, is where your afterbirth goes. So these are the fenu, and they're bound together with the aho. The aho has a lot of um, symbolic links, if you think about whakapapa. Aho are your lines coming down. And aho means shining white. It's the way that... Um, people relate to each other across their lines. The traditional construction of the mucker or flax fibre cloaks takes the weaver much time just in the preparation of the flax fibres before the weaving of the garment even begins. The first time I saw mocha being made was when I watched my uncle strip a flax leaf and expertly roll the fibres together, entwined with a strand of my hair across his thigh. I was struck by the luminous quality and softness of the mocha fibres. You have to make your weft, weft threads, which are these little fine ones here, and all your warp threads. And depending on whether it's going to be a long cloak and need to be um, have have twice the number so they they'll be joined halfway through the weaving. And if it's for a big person, that could take up to 800 strands, and then you could double that if you're going to have it long. As a teenager, I often used to go for walks high up in the clifftop bush.
I loved the peaceful aliveness and the way the movement of the trees seemed to envelop me with their whispering of times past. Breathing in the earth and trees soothed me, calming the rippling tide of teenage insecurities and internal turbulence. Like a protective canopy, the bush offered temporary relief and protection from the outside world of other people's opinions and ideas of who and what I should be and believe. Having a compliant and somewhat reserved nature, I had for the most part subordinated my own power and hierarchy of values to authority figures, such as teachers, parents, and religious doctrine. The somewhat painful process of distilling my own identity and values became the focus of this stage of life. Paradoxically, it was also a time of relative freedom, experimentation and beauty, an exploration of the art of seduction and sexuality was also a series of somewhat fascinating and passionate experiences. I am grateful I survived those transitional years that I call the midday of life, although I still carry the beautiful scars. The pake, or rain cape form, therefore, symbolises the rich, red intenseness of this life stage, the assertion of ego, but also a need to create a form of protection from the barrage of outside influences and opinions so that I could begin to hear my own rhythm and purpose. Even now, it is still important to me to return to the lush green of the natural world. Today, I am more grounded. I live in a rural environment where a sense of space and a closeness to the elements and seasons is important to me. I find it creates a spaciousness and stillness in my mind that allows a flow of inspiration a clearing out of old thought patterns, making way for the quiet voice of intuition and divine wisdom. There is a new trust in the flow of life and a trusting of my own intuitive responses that has grown inside me as I learn to combine intuition with intellect, an awareness I hope to instill in my children. In this metaphoric journey of life stages, I wear the cloak of pale greens, blues and lilacs of my afternoon of life. So the third cloak uh, is referencing the stage of life that I, I see myself in at the moment. And so for me, from a soul perspective, I use that word uh, because I, I would normally use the word wairua in Māori, but I use that word soul tentatively because it can mean so many different things to different people. But from a soul perspective, I wanted to reference a time of life where clear vision, objectivity, and purpose, and, and even inspiration, I find, is really sort of coming together in my life at the moment and balancing the masculine feminine energies in oneself. Now, as an artist, I seek personal growth through the process of making the work. It is all that matters to me in the moment. It's like catching the cusp of a wave and being pushed along by the unseen force of the rolling undercurrent. I surrender to the flow of focused inspiration and creative intent, following wherever it leads me. I trust it will take me to new discoveries as I learn to relinquish attachment to the outcome. It represents a coming into an adult maturity. There is a reassuring comfort of knowing who I am and where I come from. Culturally, I am blessed. 
and acknowledge all lines of my ancestry from whom I descend. I catch glimpses of the magnificence of the perfection of life and how every opportunity taken or not taken, every achievement and failure, all serves my evolution and understanding. In this stage, I am more concerned with authentic relationships and communication. I find my voice as an artist, a mother, a partner, and within all the other roles I play. This cloak form begins to take a form of a bird's wings and body as I reference the stepped potama pattern, symbolizing the levels of learning and intellectual growth achieved thus far on my journey through life. Such a privilege and an honor to, to have these incredibly talented weavers in both traditional and contemporary weaving to work on this project. Following on in my metaphorical story of the stages of life, the final cloak, Te Kahu Pōkere, captures the evening of life, the final season in this physical body. In the early stages of the creation of this kahu, or hawk-like cloak, I visited the Auckland Museum's collections as part of my research. I was particularly inspired by a rare and unique cloak made entirely of tui tail feathers. It is a construction which demonstrates an innovative approach utilising a newly introduced colonial cotton material, combining it with traditional weaving techniques. A combination of new material and techniques in that the tail feather cloak uh, the tail feathers are stitched onto a, a fabric, an imported fabric. But the way that they were put together before they were stitched on is quite old. I think it may have been done in Tahiti and places like that, that it was the, the feathers were twined together and made into a long line. They're actually like that on the only example of a Maori sail, which is in the British Museum and the feathers have been twined together before they've been attached to the sail. So it's the only cloak that I've seen in New Zealand that has that technique. This last cloak, Te Kahu Pōkere, like each cloak before it, carries layers of symbolism. It is named after the dark hawk of my ancestors from the old Waiohua Pepeha a proverb that speaks of the dark, sacred hawk of Tamaki that will not be lost in the dark. Because birds were seen as a medium that connected the um, era atua with the era tangata, so that's the spiritual world with the tangible world that we live in, and the birds go between those two. So especially when people die, they become bird-like because they're transcending from the era tangata into the era atua. And at that time, to have a cloak over them, a feather cloak, makes them even more bird-like. And sometimes in the past, with the old chants, they would refer to that person as a particular feather or as a bird. And uh, manutahi, that's the messenger. The manu is bird. Ho is the living breath, and that's another word for feathers. So you start to get that kind of symbolism coming through into the cloaks. For me, the bird-like form of this cloak points to a shift in perspective gained in the evening of life. A wider vision that allows us to understand the bigger picture and the grand organised design of the circle of life. Here I stand on the west coast black sands of Murawai Beach as the sun sets. My sequential journey of following the sun through another day of life nears its completion. The inevitability of the cycle of creation and destruction, and yet the energy itself never dies. 
it only changes form. Kapo, ka'au, ka'awatia. The journey from darkness into the world of light and through to the worlds of creation. My name is Te Rungo i Puhia Ti Oki Oki i Hawaiki. This body of work has been my exploration of a journey of life through light. <laughs>